Okay, there was a really interesting chart on inflation that actually Zero Hedge tweeted, and um, I threw it up in the notes here, where they said real hourly earnings are negative 1.7%. It's the 10th month in a row where U.S. incomes aren't keeping up with inflation. So the problem here is that, you know, people's incomes have increased with inflation, but not as much as the inflation rate. So the net effect of it is that people are feeling worse off when they go to the grocery store to buy groceries or whatever they need. They don't feel as rich. That's the fundamental problem here. And I think there's a lot of people out there who think that there's a free lunch, that if we printed two trillion worth of stimmy checks, this is the whole that two trillion dollar bill last year that they shoveled through. I think the idea was we're going to print as much money as we can before the election and it's going to help us in the midterms. Actually, as it turns out, it boosted inflation so much that people are feeling worse off, even though their wages went up slightly, because on a net basis, their earnings are down. So I just think it's a good reminder that um, you can't just like print uh, wealth. You can't print your way to prosperity. No free lunches. There's no free lunches. Yeah. Or we're going to create addiction to universal income or universal subsidy. Um, that's the alternative is people are going to basically try and vote to make some programs that were initially meant to be temporary more permanent in order to keep up the uh, the lifestyle that they've become accustomed to. Just uh, just to build on Sachs's point, uh, the University of Michigan uh, Consumer Sentiment was released, I think it was today, this morning. And it shows exactly what he's saying, which is that, you know, consumers' propensity and confidence in the economy has been falling off a cliff. You know, the month over month change was almost, uh, it was down 8.2%. The year over year change is down almost 20%. Current economic conditions was down 20%, and then index of consumer expectations down 19%. So to to Sachs's point, people are scared. Yeah, well, we've been we've been talking on the show for the last, I'd say, a couple of months about balancing the risk of recession versus the risk of inflation. Inflation, I think, has gotten slightly worse. It, the print went from, the last print was like 7.1%, now it's 7.5%. So to Jamal's point earlier, it's getting worse, but the rate of how fast it's getting worse is Could slowing. Could be peaking. But the risk of recession, I think, is increasing because what's keeping this economy going is the consumer. And if the consumer sentiment now all of a sudden is tanking and people feel poor because of inflation, I just, you know, now the, the, the risks are starting to become well, more as balanced. Sentiment, as sentiment goes down, this is where governors play a critical role, because if they don't open up these economies, we can't actually have a consumer-led consumption rebound of the economy because there aren't any services to buy because you can't actually be around anybody. So if the economy remains effectively closed and people are done buying, you know, tubs of margarine and toilet paper uh, because, you know, Armageddon isn't coming as we were worried it would, what are we supposed to be doing? So this is how these things interplay. So we have to get these, again, going back to where we started, we have to get this economy open and we have to just get back to some sense of normalcy and the consumer will lead us out. But I think, Sachs, you're right. On the margin, I think the risk is towards a recession because people don't see this. Thomas Sowell, who's a well-known Stanford, he's a, I think he's a senior fellow at, at Hoover. Um, you know, he he has this comment, which is effectively taxes are bad for the rich and the poor, but inflation is bad just for the poor. Before we continue, help us clicking that YouTube like button and subscribe now to our channel. This shows the algorithm that you valued this information. And it helps us spread that message. Sharing is caring. And now, let's continue. And the reason he says that is because, you know, if you're wealthy, you can transition to assets that are sort of inflation adjusted or inflation protected, right? You can consume assets or you can purchase assets to protect yourself. But inflation is an ex exceptionally regressive means of the government taking compensation away from you, current compensation, and it disproportionately affects working class ordinary people. And so if you have real wages that are negative, inflation that's high, that's confiscatory, right? It, you are you are meaningfully less well off than you were before. And, you know, the wealthy folks have a way to hedge, but normal, ordinary, working class people do not. And on the margin, then, if they then do not go out and spend, the problem will be some sort of recessionary effect. I think history is going to be really judgmental of Biden if he is the last person to basically give the green light and all of these Democratic governors basically revolt and open up under underneath, you know, uh, either silence or the complete opposite point of view. This is a really right. bad setup. Well, National Journal, which again is not some right-wing publication, they're just sort of a, a, an analyst of what's happening in Washington, said that Biden had an article, Biden is blowing his COVID moment. He was elected to lead us back to normalcy. All he had to do was say, guys, it's time for the restrictions to come off and take credit for the fact that we were, that the whole country was ready to move on. And he's kind of missed it. 
And uh, but this, this trucker convoy is coming to Washington gives him one more chance, I think, to get on the right side of this because there's really two ways he can react. One is to treat them as you know domestic terrorists, you know racist, white supremacist, insurrectionaries, or he can you know embrace them. Yeah, and constituents. Say, all he has to do is say, "Listen, we love you, we respect you, we hear you, we agree with you. It's time for these mandates to end." And you know what? Thank you, Rachel Walensky and Anthony Fauci, for your service. We understand you're just trying to keep the country safe, but thank you very much. We're ready to move on. We're getting rid of all these restrictions. His popularity would like bounce five points, ten points if he did that. Do you want to know one thing about crypto? I made over three thousand percent in profit in a few weeks. Fact is, the traditional financial system, the traditional money system, makes you poor, not rich. If you want to earn five hundred thousand, one million dollar, you have to wait until you're fifty, sixty, seventy in the traditional financial system, and you probably will still be broke, and you will be old. This is not a sexy combination, as you can imagine. But the question is, how can you start in crypto and make these profits? Where to invest? Where to start? My name is Gunnar, and I'm from Germany, as you can hear, and things are a little bit different in Germany. More about that later on. The fact is, there are lots of different cryptocurrencies. It's a gigantic universe where beginners and professionals get easily lost. But there is light at the end of the tunnel. There are seven key steps you need to follow to become successful in this market. You have to know them, and if you fail one of them, it's literally impossible to succeed in this market. Just an example, one of the key points is your exchange, and one of the biggest are, for example, Binance and Coinbase. These are trusted and well-established exchanges, but, and this is a big but, you won't find the super profitable coins on those exchanges. The unknown super profitable coins that get gigantic profits are not traded on those kind of exchanges. They are traded on much smaller insider platforms that are barely known. And I can tell you what those super secret exchanges are and why they are so profitable. And another super important thing are the right information sources. The point is, the internet is gigantic. There are hundreds and hundreds of YouTube channels, blogs, pages and much, much more. And there are also market makers and influencers. For example, Elon Musk, he is not a crypto guy. But the moment he recommended Dogecoin, it went through the roof, to the moon, so to say. But why did he recommend it? Where did he hear it from? He didn't hear it from newspapers. And believe me, he is listening to someone. But you have to know who and you have to react before he is reacting. This is really, really important. And these are only two of the seven steps you have to follow in order to be successful in crypto. And if you want to know all of these steps in much more detail, and if you want to have a comprehensive checklist, here's what you should do. There is a link below this video. Click on this link and you will get the opportunity to subscribe to my channel. Click on the link and you will see a video where I explain the next steps. So see you soon. Click on the link now. I'll see you there.